Nice to see you back. As this is the first one after our October half term. Uh, I hope you had a good time. Um, the weather's pretty miserable today. Albert has gone back on uh, squirrel watch. But um, I personally don't think any self-respecting squirrel would go out in this sort of weather. It's really windy. And it will stop now. It has been raining quite hard. But anyway, that's where he is. And we have moved back to the coast. If you remember, we left West Sussex and we headed north into Surrey. Then we went into Berkshire. We've now headed south from Berkshire and we are in Hampshire. And what we're going to cook today is Russia pudding. Now, what, we, what I've tried to do with these recipes, I've not picked anything difficult or expensive because I want you to have a go at it. So they're all fairly simple meals, but the advantage of this one is that unlike our eaten mess or our maids of honor tart, this one, Russia pudding, you can actually, once you've cooked it, it could be the family dinner. Just add some vegetables, your favorite vegetables, and maybe some potatoes, I don't know. I don't think you need potatoes really, but add some vegetables and there you are. That's your dinner. How wonderful is that? Don't answer, rhetorical question yet again. So, usual procedure. I'm gonna go and wash my hands over there at the sink. You're gonna see some pictures of Hampshire, and then we will begin what is, to be honest, the simplest of all the ones we've done so far. See you in a minute. Right, now, what do we do? Well, the answer is we first, as always, look at the ingredients. And as soon as we look at the ingredients, you're going to know how very simple it is because what you need is 300 grams of self-raising flour, 150 grams of suet, now you can use vegetarian suet if you wish, and in fact if you want to make a bigger rasha pudding or a smaller rasha pudding, two to one is the ratio. So if you've got 100 grams of suet, you've got 200 grams of flour. 300 grams of suet, 600 grams of flour, and a very large rasha pudding. All you need alongside that is an onion, some bacon, I've got about 200 grams of bacon, roughly that, and some water, and that's it. Those are all the ingredients you need. So now let's look at the utensils you need, and that's gonna be quite simple as well. You will need our trusted bowl. You will need some kitchen foil. You will need a rolling pin. You will need a frying pan. You'll need a chopping board and a sharp knife. You'll need possibly a wooden spoon. No, you will need a wooden spoon, thinking about it. You'll also need a fork and a steamer because just like Sussex Pond pudding this is a pudding that cooks for two and a half hours in the steamer you can do it in the oven and if you do it in the oven it will be about 45 minutes to an hour so it is quicker but the traditional way was to do it in a steamer or to steam it in fact remember I can speak Yes, I can. Well done me. The traditional way is to wrap the pudding once you've made it in some pudding cloth and put it in the steamer. I don't have pudding cloth. I think maybe lots of you won't have pudding cloth. You probably have got tin foil, so we're going to wrap it in tin foil. Cheaper. Okay. Right. Let us begin. First thing we do is to chop the onion. And I'm not, it's always very difficult to do this because I've always got my hands in the wrong place. Um, so you can't actually see, but chopping an onion quite simply, you just take the top off, take the bottom off, top and bottom taken off, see, right, good, good, good. And then remove the skin, which I've probably now taken out of focus, but never mind. So take the skin off and that is your onion ready to be chopped. Now, I don't know the correct way to chop an onion. 
this will be obvious in a second. I probably don't know the correct way to take the skin off, as it seems to be taking slightly longer than I thought it was going to be. Right, okay, you're all out of the way. There's your onion. Now the question I always ask is, do you chop it like that? Or do you chop it like that? Okay? That seems a bit difficult, so I'm going to chop it this way. I've just had an idea. I'm going to chop it so you can see me chopping it. See? Just do slices down like that. And basically, onions fall apart anyway. Don't we all? Uh, no, we don't. So, don't shoot there. So, chop onion like that, and then just chop it the other way. And once you've chopped it, put it to one side. Next, on a fresh chopping board, well you don't have to, but you can, you chop your bacon. And again, just chop it into chunks. You can buy something called lardons, which is chopped bacon. <laughs> And there are many people asking now why I didn't do that. But anyway, we'll go through that and then you put that to one side very, very briefly because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. Next, you turn on the gas under your frying pan. If you need to, put a little bit of oil in the frying pan. I have one of these that says it doesn't need oil, so I'm not going to put any. And then you throw in the bacon. Move it around a bit and let the bacon begin to brown. Don't worry if it's stuck together with other bits of bacon, that doesn't matter in the least. Once the bacon has begun to brown, you can Throw in the onions. Then leave them for a little bit. Keep watching them and you may obviously need an adult's help here. So please don't try and do this on your own. Although if an adult's there, I'm sure you could give them a little stir. Not the adults. Don't stir them. Oh no. Right, once the bacon and the onion, or the, the onion has softened and the bacon has turned a little bit brown, turn off the heat and you can put that to one side. Or the other side. And let's put that side. Right, sometimes Richard, I worry. Okay, so the bacon and onion has been browned and softened, put to one side. Now we make the suet pastry. And for that, we need to add the flour into our bowl. And we need to add the suet into our bowl. I don't know why I did that. And we will need, at some stage, the water. The water, water, water. And our fork. But first, if you remember the recipe for Sussex Pond Pudding. Well, if, you, if you've seen it. <laughs> if you haven't, you won't remember it. That would be silly. Um, but that was in East Sussex. And for that, we made suet pastries. So, you do exactly the same thing. First, using your hands, you mix in the suet and the flour. Try to get it, squeeze the suet and stuff, so that it ends up looking a bit like breadcrumbs. But, it's boring. I'm not even gonna speed it up this time. I'm gonna cut myself off. Not easy, but there we go. And when I've done it, I will come back. When you've done all that and it's like breadcrumbs, what you then, no, I'll, no, I'll make it to breadcrumbs and then I'll tell you. Sorry about that. It'll probably take you about five minutes to hand mix 
the suet and the flour together. And when it then looks a bit like breadcrumbs, you can start to add some of the water. Now, you judge the water, so I haven't told you a set amount, but add a bit and then using your fork, because otherwise you really do get your hands messy, start to mix it into a dough. Then add a little bit more water. Always add less than you need because otherwise you're going to end up with too soggy dough and all you can do then is try and add some more flour and suet and you don't really want to do that. So just add a little bit at a time and gradually the mixture will <laughs> become thicker. I nearly said just like the lead, world leaders will become thicker, but I didn't. I resisted that temptation. I don't know why. Okay, when it's beginning to get um, like dough, switch over to using your hands. They'll get messy, but who cares? Who indeed cares? You may still need to add a little bit more water. Oh, especially if you throw some of the flour out. But we're gradually getting there. And then when you've got it to a sort of consistency that you want, kneading it a few times, you will take it out and put it on a floured surface. So you just leave me doing this for a little bit and then come back and I'll have it out on the floured surface. So here is our dough, make it into a little bit of a ball, on the floured surface. And what you then do is the simple task is just roll it out with your rolling pin. But you want to make it into an oblong shape, not a square, but an oblong, a rectangle. You know what a rectangle is? Good. Just checking. So you roll it out till it's about till it's a rectangle. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Rectangular. And then then you take your onions and bacon and just sprinkle them. Sorry, I can't do it with my other hand. The switch hit wasn't invented when I was cooking. Just put your bacon onto the top of your suet, mainly in the middle, but leave a nice big gap at this end. Okay? Quite simply, just roll up into a Swiss roll type thing, your dough with the bacon inside. And because you've left that bit, you've got a little bit of a space, put it, seal it at that end, turn it around Richard, seal it at that end as best you can. There is your rasher pudding, but then you have to do something else. You need to put your rasher pudding, if we just move it now, inside your foil. Now, if you're baking it in the oven, then you don't need to do this. Just put it in the oven as it is, and you can glaze it a bit with something, milk, egg, whatever you can glaze things with. But what I'm doing, and I'm making sure it is really well sealed, because this is going to go for two, for two and a half hours into the steamer. Okay, so there's your rasher pudding. So we will take our rasher pudding and place it into, hoping it fits, oh Richard you are so wonderful, into our steamer. Look, that's how wonderful I am. 
and then you will put boiling water to halfway up the steamer into the saucepan in which the steamer sits and you will go away for two and a half hours so let's do that um, and to give you a clue as to what day I'm doing this on I'm going to see if New Zealand can beat India in the World T20 but I will be back after two and a half hours okay right Half hours have passed and it's time to get the rasher pudding out of the steamer and to bring it over here so you can see it and time to unroll it you need to get an adult to help you because it's going to be hot but there we have whoa our rasher pudding and shall we have a quick look inside so this is dinner tonight and there you have it rasher pudding next week is going to be something way beyond excitement and also a very nice little story as well so do join me when we're looking at what is on a plate in the Isle of Wight I'll see you then